Hi everyone. Today we are here in our workshop in Perth, Western Australia, having a look at one of my favourite engines in the FPT marine engine lineup. These two delightful twins here are the FPT Cursor 9 marine engines. Set to 620 horsepower at 2530 RPM, they are an excellent engine for both pleasure and commercial applications, offering a really good amount of low down power and torque from such a compact inline six cylinder engine. We're here today because these two engines have just arrived. They are already sold. They're actually going into a beautiful Riviera Flybridge Pleasure Cruiser. Our job today here is to check them over. I'll give you a look around the engines and all the features and advantages of the Cursor 9, then we'll give them a run. So the Cursor 9, it's been in the FPT lineup for quite a while and it is an incredibly reliable and resilient engine. They are a common rail engine, so they use the Bosch electronic common rail fuel injection system. They are great in terms of power to weight ratio. They weigh in at 940 kilograms dry weight and offer an amazing 620 horsepower at 2530 RPM for their pleasure rating. Now not only that, but it is important to discuss that they are an 8.7 litre engine and therefore their torque is fantastic. 2152 Newton metres at 1700 RPM is the maximum torque that these engines offer, but they have a really flat torque curve all the way through, probably from 1500 through to about 2300 RPM. They are incredibly compact in size for the, an 8.7 litre engine. The main advantage is the fact that from the bell housing to the front of the engine, they are 1.288 metres long. Now that is really compact by this great design from FPT, as you can see is that the turbocharger is rear mounted beyond the, the bell housing on the back of the engine. This gives a great opportunity for the gearbox to be mounted in this space under here, meaning the overall length of the engine and gearbox is really compact. The turbocharger is a, a whole set water-cooled turbocharger with wastegate here. You can see we've got a nice, easy uh, foam inlet air filter here. And straight out, we have our wet exhaust mixer, which is able to rotate uh, up and down as well. They're an incredibly shallow sump down here. So from the center line down to the bottom of the engine, we're at 292 millimeters, which is just so shallow. And above center line up, we're at 670 millimeters to the highest point which is right here on the filter housing. I'd like to show you around a few of the, the points on the engine. One thing for FPT always do is their cooling systems are always so compact. So I'll show you here on the starboard side of the engine a bit closer. Here we have the seawater inlet straight into a bronze impeller pump. The great thing about a bronze impeller pump is that it doesn't require regular maintenance. FPT is with all their engines try and keep the seawater run incredibly short. So from the bronze impeller pump, it comes out straight up into our intercooler here, which is a seawater to air intercooler. You can see our boost piping from the, the whole set turbocharger running straight here and in before it travels into the cylinder head. From there, the seawater travels straight forward and into our tube stack heat exchanger. Both these components do have sacrificial anodes, uh, which is of course very important for the marine application. From there, the seawater runs directly down here. And again, FPT, as with, the, with their larger cursor engines, have incorporated the gearbox oil cooler into the design of the engine. So there's no longer a requirement for a gearbox oil cooler to be mounted on top of the gearbox. From there, over to the other side, which because I've got an engine here, I'll show you. The seawater comes directly underneath the bell housing, up the rubber hose, and straight out the wet exhaust mixer. Further along here, you can see we've got our oil section here. So we've got our plate gearbox oil cooler within this compartment here. Dipsticks here for easy access. And then up here is our coolant reservoir, which also ties into our uh, engine oil filter, which you can see is a cartridge filter, but nice easy access tucked right in on the front of the motor. You can also see here uh, the cool little functionality of the engine oil sump pump, which allows you to pump the oil out and pump the oil back in at the flick of a switch. So no more pumping handles. The engines also come with the ability to tie in for a hot water system. Uh, should you have a vessel hot water system on board. I'll take you back over to the starboard side of the engine now and just talk a bit about the fuel system. See here we have our Bosch low and high pressure fuel pumps here situated on the engine. The FPT engine comes with a remote primary fuel filter which then travels here into the low pressure pump along the lines into the secondary spin-on fuel filter just here 
before traveling back into the high pressure pump and up and through into the cylinder head where the common rail is situated underneath the rocker cover. Uh, these are a four valve per cylinder head, uh, cylinder head on these motors. And the only other thing to show you is how easy the breather system is here with a Donaldson breather system sitting on top of the motor. So in regards to electronics, you have a Bosch ECU mounted right here. This particular unit uses the EDC7 UC31 Bosch uh, ECU. That's the only component mounted on the engine. There are three other components within the engine room. You have here your CAN bus converter, which converts the digital signal for the dash. We have our relay box, which is for starting and stopping the engine within the engine room, as well as allowing us a diagnostics port to be able to plug in, as well as the cool little item, which is our oil charge and discharge. So this is the toggle switch for both taking the oil out of your engine and again, putting the oil back in. Very cool little feature. From there, the engines have an extension harness, normally 10 metres, which travels you up to your control panel. FPT, predominantly, we bring in with the upgraded 5-inch deluxe compact touchscreen control panel, which is this one here. Really nice little panel. Uh, all that you have to mount within the, uh, within the saloon or the, at the wheelhouse is the panel itself. We've got a stop button, the buzzer for alarms, and of course the key. Simply flick the key on, panel will power up. And what the panel gives us is some great and easy access to information. So this is the home screen. The home screen here provides us with our taco, our coolant temperature, oil pressure, and liters per hour for our fuel rate. Page two gives us a lot more information in regards to oil temperatures, load percentages, boost pressures, battery voltages, fuel temperatures, torque percentage, and your fuel used over a trip. So you can reset your trip and you'll know exactly how much fuel you've used on any particular run. We also have functionality of a list of alarms to show you that everything is still green and functioning well and it will change to red should there be an issue at any given time, as well as a comprehensive alarm list with any particular fault showing so you really know what's going on at any given time. That's the great functionality of the control panel as well as being able to run it into a night mode which is excellent and doesn't affect your night vision if you are uh, moving around at night.